Hello. Um, for this problem, using Excel, when you bring up the Excel sheet, you want the one hypothesis for a mean, because this problem is giving us the averages, not a proportion. And then you just plug your values in here. So I plugged in N was 35, because that was my sample size. Population mean is what we're assuming, and we were assuming um, it's 48.8. So we use mu here for mean um, equals 48.8. And I also put it here, population mean 48.8. Now we want to test, it's, you believe it's higher, so we're testing greater. So it would be the mean greater than the 48.8. So we want to test that it's greater. Now to find the test statistic and the p-value, you use the table. So I put in the 35, population mean, and then the other part is from the sample. When they took a sample, <clears throat> the average was 45, that's what it sits here, and the standard deviation was 4.3. And then the alpha is your significance. So alpha is making your percent a decimal, 0.01. And then it gives you your values. Here's the t-value, 7.1543, right there. And then here's your p-value. Now notice there's three different p-values that depends on your test. We were testing right here, greater than. So it would be a right tail, because greater goes to the right. And 1.43 times 10 to the negative 8 is 0. So the p-value is 0. And the alpha, I wrote over here, 0 0.01. If the p-value is less than alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. And 0 is less than 0 0.01. So we reject the null hypothesis. So here, something significant happened um, because it made us reject it. We reject the null hypothesis. There is enough evidence to conclude that the true proportion of high fructose corn syrup consumption is more than or greater than, because that's what we were testing, 48.8 pounds. So you're just repeating what you said. There is enough evidence, or if it um, did not reject, then there is not enough evidence. But to get the values, you just plug these values in here, and then it will give you everything else. 